Hello everyone, this is Sedi and welcome to Sedi's Matverse. For today's video, we will discuss Binet's formula, which is our featured formula for the right time episode 2. So this formula involves terms of the Fibonacci sequence. To begin with, Fibonacci sequence are sequences whose next term is determined by the sum of its two previous terms. And its first two terms are 1 and 1. So, given that, we can express this equation. And we get that f sub 3 is equal to f sub 2 plus f sub 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. Then f sub 4, 1 plus 2 equals 3. f sub 5, 2 plus 3 equals 5. f sub 6, 3 plus 5 equals 8. f sub 7, 5 plus 8 equals 13. And so on. But how can we express a term of a Fibonacci sequence in terms of some constants and n itself. Shock binet popularized a formula about finding the n term of the Fibonacci sequence. However, it was discovered by Abraham de Mover. Abraham. Mavra before, and this is called the Binet's formula. It's pronounced as Binet. Going on with the formula, let's get started. As we can see here, we got F sub n is equal to 1 over square root of 5 multiplied by quantity 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to the nth power minus quantity 1 minus 5 all over 2 raised to the nth power and close in parentheses. This formula is pretty complicated, right? But it doesn't really involve a lot of square roots. Where do we get this? How do we have the golden ratio here? We will find out later. But let's see if this formula works first. F sub 0 is equal to 0. Right? Since F sub 1 equals 1 and F sub 2 equals 2. Oh, 1 rather. We can see that f sub 0 equals 0, since 0 plus 1 equals 1. We can check for the first few values to see if this works. So f sub 0 equals 1 over square root of 5. Any number raised to 0 that is not 0 is 1. So 1 minus 1, which is 1 over square root of 5 times 0, 0 indeed. So we've got no problem with this one. F sub 1 is equal to 1 over square root of 5 multiplied by any number raised to 1 is the number itself. So 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 minus 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2. This is equal to 1 over square root of 5, 1 half minus 1 half is 0, and 5 half minus uh, square root of 5 over 2 minus square root of 5 over 2 equals 2 square root of 5 over 2. The 2 cancels, the square root of 5 cancels, leaving us 1. How about for n equals 2? Squaring this gives us 6 
plus 2 square root of 5 using perfect square trinomial all over 4. I don't think it, I will be simplifying this because it will give the same results, I think. And it's not really that ugly. Then minus quantity 6 minus 2 square root of 5 all over 4 when you square this one. So we have f sub 2 equals 1 over square root of 5. Then this whole expression, 6 over 4 minus 6 over 4 equals 0. Meanwhile, 2 square root of 5 over 4 minus 2 square, negative 2 square root of 5 over 4 is 4 square root of 5 over 4. So 1 over square root of 5 times 4 square root of 5 over 4, these cancels out, leaving us 1. So this is true for the first few values of n. But how do we arrive at this generalized formula? The key in this problem is knowing the concept of recurrence relations. Recurrence relations are sequences whose terms are based on previous terms or preceding terms. And Fibonacci sequence is one of them. And solving them or solving the particular term requires us to find the characteristic equation of the particular recurrence relation. So this is a recurrence relation. And we will find its characteristic equation and solve for its characteristic roots. So the character characteristic equation rather is defined as since this is n plus 2, we will make it r squared. This is n plus 1, so it has degree 1, r. Then this is degree 0, so it's 1. And now we have our characteristic equation. And this characteristic equation is a quadratic one. r squared minus r minus 1 equals 0. Solving for r using the quadratic formula gives us negative, negative 1 plus or minus square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2. We get 1 plus or minus square root of quantity 1 plus 4 all over 2, which in turn becomes 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. Does these two roots ring a bell? Exactly. They are the constants raised to the power of n from the Binet's formula. But how do we get the square root of 1 over 5? Remember, in solving recurrence relations, those two characteristic roots are automatically raised to the nth power. And it's multiplied by a constant. So let these constants be a and b. So we can express f sub n in terms of these characteristic roots raised to the n power. Okay, to make things easier, we will use f sub 0 and f sub 1 to easily solve for a and b. So f sub 0, a times any number raised to 0 is 0, so 
That's 1. A times 1 is A. Then, the same thing goes for B. And we know that F sub 0 equals 0. So we have this equation. A plus B equals 0 or B equals negative A. Now, for F sub 1, A times 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 plus B multiplied by 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 equals 1. Multiplying both sides by 2 gives us A multiplied by 1 plus square root of 5 plus B multiplied by 1 minus square root of 5 equals 2. Then, from the equation on F sub 0, we know that B equals negative A. So we can substitute this into negative A. And now, the equation is easier to solve since it contains one variable now. We group the A using factoring by grouping. So we have A multiplied uh, by 1 plus square root of 5 minus quantity 1 minus square root of 5. Then we equate it 2. Finally, this becomes 1 minus 1 is 0. Square root of 5 minus negative square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5. So 2 square root of 5, A equals 2, and A equals 2 over 2 square root of 5, or 1 minus square root of 5. And this is the value of our letter A, variable A rather. Now, we know that B equals negative A. So all we have to do is make the additive inverse, negative 1 over 5. And now, we have A and B. And we can now say that F sub N equals 1 over square root of 5. Quantity 1 plus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to the nth power minus 1 over square root of 5 multiplied by 1 minus square root of 5 all over 2 raised to the nth power. And this is the Binet's formula. So that is it for today's video, Kamatverse. I hope you enjoyed and learned something from this video. If you did, please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sedis Matters. Also, follow my social media accounts because I post content there on a regular basis. That's it, folks. This is Sedi reminding you to chase your greatest moonbeam and mathematics is incomplete without you. Till next time.